Hey everyone, it's Berry. I run a one-woman business, which means all of the art that you see on my store is made, photographed, edited, and uploaded by myself. So today I wanted to walk you through how I take photos of my paintings, prints, stickers, and more. You don't need a fancy studio to take high-quality photos of your products. Everything that I use cost me $40 or less total. So let's go! By the way, the products that I'm shooting in today's video are now available on my online store. Check out my new prints, stickers, and more at madamberry.com shop. You might think that the most important thing you have to worry about in photography is the camera. It's actually not! The first thing that you need to think about is actually the lighting. You need the area to be well lit, otherwise the photograph will come out dull or grainy, even with the best of cameras. If you've got a fancy lighting setup that lets you perfectly control the situation, awesome. That can be expensive though, so here's how I achieve good lighting without spending hundreds of dollars. Find a sunny window to utilize the natural daylight. The closer you can position yourself to this window, the better. You want as much light coming in as possible. You might think that the best lighting is going to come from a bright sunny day where there's not a cloud in the sky, but that can actually cast harsh and unflattering shadows. Look for a day that's still bright, but just ever so slightly overcast, so the sunlight coming in will be diffused by the clouds. Today it was a snowy day, which actually helped because the light was bouncing up off of the ground, too. Time of day is also important. I picked a window that's getting indirect sunlight in the morning. That way the sun isn't shining directly in and making harsh shadows. Any time before noon usually works for me, but this will be dependent on your geographical location and the time of year. Here's an example of what not to look for in lighting. See how harsh the shadow is on the side of my backdrop? We don't want that. As for the actual photo-taking apparatus, I just use my phone. Most cell phone cameras these days are high enough quality to capture decent looking photographs, at least for the purposes that we're using them for. My current phone, the Google Pixel 3a, is a line that is known for having good cameras, but my previous phone, the OnePlus X, did well enough too. Onto the actual equipment, I've set up my tripod with a phone mount attachment by my sunny window, pointing down at a piece of foam core board I got at the art store for like three bucks. The tripod was about $25, and the phone mount was something like 5 bucks. These three items that I just listed are really the only expenses in this setup. I usually set up the foam core board on top of a spare card table that I have lying around, but today I got lazy and used a large cardboard box. I'm a professional. To further assist with getting the best lighting possible, we're going to add a sheet of paper to the back to help reflect the light. For this, I'm going to use this sheet of watercolor paper that I had lying around that had a sizing error, so I can't use it as intended, and now I kind of just have it lying around. What this does is it basically takes all of the light that's coming in through the window and then bounces it back down onto the backing board. This takes any shadows that are possibly cast by the main source of light and dampens them so they aren't as stark. Here's kind of a before and after. I'm putting the sheet there and then taking it away, and then putting it back, and then taking it away. You, so you can see what it does. You may also want to invest in some props to help frame your products. Don't use something that may distract from the product or could possibly be mistaken for the product, but some generic items like crystals, flowers, or other decorative pieces work really well. I've seen some stores with some really unique props, and I don't know where they get them, but I'm jealous. Today I'm just reaching for some crystals that I collect. Or used to collect? I don't know, it's been a while. Now that I've got my product, some props, and my tripod set up with the camera pointed down at the foam core board, it's time to position the shot. The tripod really helps keep things hands-free, so that I can just focus on moving the items around and getting the best framing possible. Since most of my items are flat, I usually take them just straight top down so that there's no weird perspective warping. If I'm shooting something that's 3D, like a pin or a keychain or something like that, I usually try to reposition my camera so the shot is a little bit more interesting than just a flat top-down shot. The tripod also ensures that there's no blur from a shaky hand operating the camera. When I've laid out the items in a way that I like, I can just press the button and take the shot. I try to take at least four or five shots of each product, not just because I want to compare and get the best one, but I find that having more than one gallery photo in the product listing can be helpful, 
especially if people want to zoom in or see different angles or details. The last step is to do a little bit of editing. I use Affinity Photo for this. Take a look at my last video if you want to know my thoughts on that program and the other programs in the Affinity Suite. What we're going to do mainly is correct the colors and lighting in the photo. We do the best that we can to get good lighting in our scene so that we don't have to do too much editing, but every camera is going to interpret a lighting situation differently. You can see these photos are a bit warm. They have kind of a yellow cast to them. We're going to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use adjustment layers. Using an adjustment layer instead of editing the layer directly means that if we make a mistake, we haven't applied that permanent effect to our photo, and we can just turn the layer off if we need to. Working as non-destructively as possible is important in case we want to undo or edit something later. The first step is I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer to make the photo a little bit brighter. I'm also going to drag the um, black output a little bit up so that we get a little bit more contrast in the photo as well. You can see on the line graph up at the top where the blacks and whites start appearing in, and we don't want to pull our slider too far into that graph, otherwise we start washing the photo out. So just a little bit. Then to correct the yellow hues, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. This lets you change how much red, blue, and green is in the highlights, midtones, and shadows of the photo based on the graph that you can see. If you watch while I pull up the red line, it increases how red the photo looks. I'm going to tweak the curves of these lines a bit. Not by much, I don't want to bring colors into the photo that shouldn't be there, but just until the photo has more neutral lighting. The curves function is a bit complicated to explain without going in depth on color theory, but Basically, since this photo is a little too yellow, what we want to do is increase the opposite of yellow, which in this case is going to be the blues. It can sometimes help to create a new pixel layer and put in some white lines, just to have a better reference of what colors in the photo look like compared to white. So just by taking this graph and tweaking the curves a little bit, and then comparing it to the white layer that's on top, we can start to construct more neutral lighting. The most important thing to keep in mind when editing photos is to make the product look like it looks in real life. We don't want to start pulling in colors that don't exist in the actual product, because then when the customer gets it, they might be confused as to why this thing looks different than the photo. The last thing that I do is I crop the photo. My story uses square product photos, so I crop them into a square format to ensure that I get the best framing possible. That way my website isn't trying to algorithmically crop a photo, and we know how that goes because Twitter sucks at that. These are also useful for social media posts, and since Instagram uses a square format, I don't have to do any extra work to get an Instagram post from these photos. And that's it! We have a set of photos ready to list on my store. Sticking up, you can find all of these stickers and more over at madamberry.com slash shop. Which one is your favorite? Mine's this one. I love her. I'm a pretty novice photographer. By no means is any of this professional advice, but this just goes to show that you don't have to be a professional to still get quality photos for your art store or for social media. The most important thing to keep in mind is that you want the photos to showcase the quality of your work. I still always have tons to learn, though, so if you have any favorite photography tips, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, over in this video. <laughs> Take care.